doing a quick change and proper way to set one up. These are the lineup cones. Lineup cone and the clamp collar. This is a piece of key stock. And then we pry our lineup cone tight. I'm just going to check my bar for square. Yeah, we're good. Install the second bar and line it up with the first bar. Installing lineup cones and lock collars, clamp collars onto the second bar. Once I get both or lineup cones in and the clamp collar on there, and then you pry it over. But on this bar, we want to line it up to this bar. So we may have to shim it. And an easy way to tell is by the center markings on each bar. So we can measure our center distance and make sure they're both right. Okay, so I do have to shim this one. It's about a sixteenth out. I've ground up some wedges, basically, that I can put in where I need them in. If one is real far out, and I have to move the bar, whichever direction I have to move the bar is, decides where I put these. And then it has to be level still, too. So... In order to make it level, I can I can put a level on here, adjust that to suit, and then check this bar and find that we're fairly close to level. So it's just our distance between centers that we need to adjust. either put this on this side to move the bar towards the other one or on the opposite to move that end over. We're a sixteenth of an inch out. Right there. So now we have the bars level on the same plane and centers the same distance apart. So we can start to install our bearings. Install the double bearings that will be used to mount the machine on. And we put the teardrop shape up because once we have it set up, we're going to bore weld the inside. And the bore welder attaches to the teardrop. These bores were fairly simple to line up because they weren't built up previously. We're going to do that in the ne next stage using our bore welder machine. Had they been built up, we would probably have had to use this method to shim them into 
alignment correctly or had a welder leave a witness mark for the cone to fit into. Now when welding on the bearings, I like to leave about a hand width just for room to work and adjust the tool during the machining procedure. I, li I like to use four, this is more rigid. When I'm welding these on, I like to tack them to the machine first and then afterwards to the bearing after I have all four supports on the machine and make sure that there's no large gaps but a nice tight fit. Or are in place we can go ahead and tack them to the bearing. So now we have all our bearings welded in place with our supports and we're going to remove our lineup cones and draw the bar out of the bore. And the bar should slide fairly easily. If not, the double bearing can be adjusted to allow it to slide. I'm removing the double bearings and preparing to install the bore welder so we can build up the bores in here and bring them back to the factory spec. And then these will go back on for line boring after the bore welding is completed. Sometimes you can spend an hour getting the bars to line up. We were lucky and it just happened. We've removed the double bearing and now we're preparing to install the bore welder. The bore has been cleaned out of all grease and rust. We take our rod and thread it into the top hole of the teardrop, which is why we mount the teardrop facing up, because when we install the welder, the welder will hang down off of this rod. Uh, just a shortcut to center it is just off of the teardrop bore and to the rod. It'll get you close and then adjustments have to be made with this centering adapter. Well, right now I'm, I'm centering it at the front and then I'll center it at the back of the bore to make sure it's gonna run through with the bore. And in order to do that, we have to hit function buttons that rotate and spin. And as I can see, I have to shift over to the left to center it. Preheating the bore before welding, that way we can cook out any grease or anything that's nasty in there so that we don't end up with a hard bore and we can machine it out afterwards. Once we're happy with our center in the bore and we have our welder positioned properly, we can put a fire blanket over top to keep our gases in. So we bore welded our bore and we've reinstalled our double bearing or mounting head and now we're going to put the bar in and start to bore the hole. The machine is mounted on the double bearing or mounting head. The bar is through 
and we're just placing our set screw in to couple the drill motor to the bar. Now we will draw the bar back and find a hole that's going to work for us. found ourselves a suitable hole. We're going to install our cutting tool and a flat bottom set screw so we can begin cutting. We'll just move this a little further ahead and we can set our tool just knock off the high spots of our well for our first cut. Check the speed and make a little cut. And once we've cut in there a little ways, we need to stop and Back it up, check to make sure we haven't made the bore too big. Now at this point, if we could reach our second set of bores, we would carry on over to them, rapiding with our machine. But we can't reach these ones in one pass. So we'll back it out and we'll readjust the tool. So we've now adjusted the tool out for our second cut, which we can adjust it out a little more. There won't be any lumps or bumps of weld in there. And we'll take another little cut in and measure the hole again. We don't want to make the hole too big. <laughs> 